one's nap time over? No? Is that your box? Is that my seed box that my seeds came in that you have claimed? Do you want to look for your adoring fans? Very sweet. Hi everyone, it's Brittany here with Green Bee Flowers in Strathroy, Ontario, Canada. We are growing, designing, and learning together in Zone 6A. So today we are going to talk all about my 2023 Dahlia lineup. We're going to talk about Dahlia cuttings, and we are going to talk about how to check your Dahlia tubers coming out of winter storage as we begin to start to wake up our tubers for the spring. So let's get started. into this video I just wanted to remind all of my Canadian followers that our Dahlia tuber sale closes on April 1st. Uh, we will be starting to ship our Dahlia tubers out across Canada probably closer to the end of April and for some of you who are out west we're going to be keeping an eye on the temperatures to make sure that we don't ship Dahlias to you when it's frozen. Now it's important to remember to purchase Dahlias from small farms for several different reasons. The first is because your small farmer is not bringing imported dahlias in, which means that the possibility of you receiving a dahlia that has anything like leafy gall or crown gall is significantly lower. Most of us, us included, grow in organic-based soils uh, without pesticides, and so you also have the benefit of knowing that you don't have any residual neonics in your dahlia tubers, which is why it's so important to purchase dahlias from small farms in your country. I know that the Dahlia Tuber Hunger Games are on right now and have been going on really since February. 
So I'm just letting you know that if you're hoping to still order some Dahlia tubers from some of our varieties, you can do that until April 1st. So let's talk about what is new to our fields this year. I don't like participating in the Dahlia Hunger Games. <sighs> I did the first couple years and then very quickly realized that I did not enjoy that. Um, but over the years, I've also been able to connect with local growers, get on email lists, and as we're starting to order things that are more at a wholesale quantity, I've been bringing things in from other farms, some of which are even before they launch online. And so I've been really lucky to bring in some very coveted varieties for 2023. So here's what we have coming in. And also it's important to remember when I'm talking about this that there are varieties that are very common in other countries but because of import laws aren't necessarily as easy to find across Canada. The varieties that I'm talking about today are varieties that I have been seeking for a lot of years really since I first fell in love with dahlias and now I have finally been able to add some of these to my grow list. There's still a whole host of them that of course, you know, we, we don't have as much access to the Bloomquist series, stuff that is like the Cozy Town variety uh, or the KAs uh, from Christine Albright are still not really making their way into the Canadian market. So for some of you, this may seem like a list where you've already fallen in love with these, you already have these tubers, but for us, this is a really big, really exciting list to have access to because as we start to grow our stock and as I hope to become a little bit more of a provider for Dahlia tubers across Canada, I think that's something in a market that's really underserved in, in Canada. Having some of these varieties is going to be quintessential to us being able to move that side of the Green Bee Flower Farm forward. So here we go. So for the first time this year, and I have been looking for these for years, American Dawn. I was finally, finally able to get American Dawn Dahlia tubers. These are coming from Medic Meadows, and I will link all of for the Canadian growers. Some of them are still having their sales. I will link all of these farms below. American Dawn is a really, really beautiful dahlia that has peach florets with a really gorgeous, like, lavender mauve center to it. It's a very sought after dahlia. I don't know how tuber storage for it works yet. So, again, these ones, I'm really hoping that we'll be able to bring them in you know, going into 2024, but for this year, this will be our first year growing them. So American Dawn is the first one. Next, we have Black Satin. Black Satin is coming as well, I think from Medique Meadows. I have not personally had this one. I've wanted to add another like chocolate black dahlia to my list for a while. High Blood Fire has always been a very good wholesaling dahlia for us because it's smaller than Arabian Night and it's smaller than Karma Chalk, but having a couple that like black satin is a little bit more of a larger formal decorative so having that one come in to kind of add to my black dahlias I'm very excited about that and these are tubers again that I haven't always been able to get to before the dahlia hunger sales so that's another one we also I'm replacing blight and softer gleam uh, which I did have this past year but my tubers did not survive the winter which is really unfortunate so I am bringing replacement tubers of those in as well. Next uh, we have Brookside Snowball. Um, two years ago, two years ago, ago, oh, two years ago, I grew a dahlia called Snowflake. It was a little white pom-pom dahlia called Snowflake. It was not a tall dahlia and no matter what I did, I could not get it out of like container gardening size. So Brookside Snowball, according to the websites, is taller. Uh, it still has slightly larger than like pom-pom, so the blooms on it are about this big. And I'm looking forward to adding that one because you can never have enough white dahlias. I'm getting two tubers of those. They are coming from more blooms. I'm also adding some more stock of brown sugar. Uh, again, this is a very, very popular dahlia. That kind of rust color that it has is very popular throughout the fall. So as many of those as I can possibly bring in and propagate, I am going to do that because brown sugar is just such a beautiful dahlia. We are also bringing in Castle Drive, uh, which is a very sought after dahlia in Canada and also a very rare dahlia to find in Canada. And I have three tubers of those coming in from two different farms. So I've got two coming in from Marion at Oak Ridge, uh, Oak Ridge Dahlias. 
And then I have one tuber coming from another local flower farmer called Beneficial Meadows. Their tuber sale is closed now, but I was very lucky to get a Castle Drive from their sale. And I'm interested actually to grow Castle Drive from two different farms because Castle Drive is one that can often be mislabeled for Coralie, which we're also bringing in, but I'll get there. And so I wanted to see how accurate those dahlias are uh, based on what they're labeled as, right? So we're bringing Castle Drive in. We are also, as I said, bringing in Coralie. So Coralie is a slightly blushier version of Castle Drive and I'm just very interested to see the difference between this one and Castle Drive, right? So Castle Drive has a little bit more of a yellowy undertone to it, whereas uh, Coralie is much more blush, much more pink. So I also have three tubers coming in of her and I didn't write down where I got those from. We're gonna try, I'm gonna plant them not beside each other in the flower field, but I do want to like look and compare and contrast them this summer to kind of see like, you know, what they look like and whether they're actually accurately labeled from the former growers. So we'll see, but I have big hopes for those as we start to expand as well into more wholesaling, adding in some of those blushier toned, you know, larger, dahlias that are not cafe au lays but like this the sweet natalie size uh is going to be i think important moving forward because we're starting to see a lot of those blush tones show up in wedding work and as florists are starting to understand the different names of dahlias they're seeking specific varieties and so as much of that as i can get into my field i want those now the next one that we are bringing in this year is Golden Scepter. So, Golden Scepter is one I've never had before. Uh, we had the Karma Chalk and the Karma Gold varieties, and so I think Golden Scepter is going to be very similar to Karma Gold. We stopped growing both Karma Chocolate and Karma Gold because they just were not tall enough dahlias for us for cutting. But Golden Scepter, so I have one tuber of that one coming in because people either really love it or really hate it. But I'm interested in it because I'd love to have more dahlias in my field that match with like the yellow at yellow sunflowers. We love growing those Vincent sunflowers. Um, so I'm just curious, this one's kind of like a my own personal, hey, let's try it out. We are gonna be growing a bunch of our own tubers this year. So we did give names to, and I'm gonna, we'll talk about those I think later in the summer once they bloom because I'm trying to propagate them. I'd like to build up stock um, on some of them. The majority of them are colorette varieties, uh, which I think is a market that's kind of underserved right now. And as colorettes are starting to come back into style, seeing those open centers is kind of cool. But we'll talk about those later in the summer after they start blooming. But the biggest one that you'll want to know that we're having success with is Rubber Ducky, uh, which is that really cute little yellow, yellow, um, kind of semi ball dahlia with like the, the bright yellow pollen center that looks like a beak. We called that one rubber ducky and we're propagating it. So I'm hoping to have that one on the market for 2025. I'm also bringing in a dahlia, a uh, little palm dahlia called Irish Miss. I love my fuchsias. I love things with variegation. This is a, a single off. It's coming from more blooms. So just one tuber. And this one's again, this is for my own personal collection. I just I want to have some that are unique because the unique ones are always the ones that sell to the home gardeners as opposed to the flower farmers, right? This isn't necessarily a dahlia that I'm going to grow en masse for the wholesale market, but it is a very cute little like fuchsia variegated palm that I'm excited to have for myself. I also have Joey Paula coming in this year. So again, another Joey. We're just going to collect them all. Um, and I have two of those coming from Oak Ridge. So next from More Blooms, I have two of Lynn's Louise coming in, which is a really lovely kind of creme white dahlia with a lavender fuchsia center to it. I haven't grown this one before. I'm quite excited to grow this one. From Fairy Patch Flower Farm, which is one of the most sought after flower farm growers in all of Canada. Her tubers always sell out almost immediately. We have Nicholas coming in and I've had Nicholas before beautiful dahlia, uh, but it did not survive storage. So we're reordering and I'm getting it from a local farmer this time as opposed to ones that bring in import because I've learned my lesson. And a lot of these as well, only bringing in a few tubers the first year, I won't even necessarily put them into long storage. They're going to sit and probably cure before I re-wake them up and start taking cuttings from them right away again in January and February for 2024. Um, so only having one tuber I'm not worried about. 
as a grower, um, I only need one tuber to survive with a useful eye that I can propagate for the following year. And you can get, you know, anywhere between two to six new cuttings off of one tuber, right? It's not a one in one. You can keep going. So, and we'll get to that part in the next, next section of the video. I also, finally, have peaches and cream coming in. Uh, in the UK, I know this one's called peaches. I think it's called peaches and cream. In the United States, I have three of these coming in from Oak Ridge Dahlias. Uh, I've been trying to get my hands on these tubers for years. I always miss out on Dahlia Mayflower Farms sale and I'm just really excited to have these being added to the list this year. So um, ordering three kind of gives me a little bit of like, you know, tuber insurance as well. Uh, these are really beautiful dahlias. They're very popular for wedding work. Um, everybody loves them, so I'm just very excited to have them. I'm also bringing in Platinum Blonde. So this is probably the first intentional colorette variety dahlia that I've ordered. I know everybody's always seeking apple blossom, um, but colorette I think is just very beautiful. It's very dainty and it's going to be really beautiful for wedding work. Uh, so this is one that I have coming in this year. I've got two of these tubers coming in. I'm so excited to grow this one. I just have to remember to put it away from my cafe au lait uh, so, th so that if we do decide to take seeds, I'm not going to have any like really weird looking like crossovers. So that's an exciting one. We also have what is potentially <laughs> the one I'm most proud of getting this this year. Uh, we have Rock Run Ashley. <laughs> I don't know how it happened, um, but I was able to get two from Medique Meadows, and I'm pretty sure that they are one of the only tuber companies or uh, farms in all of Canada um, that sells this one as a part of stock. It's always super limited, and I got two. <sighs> and I don't know how I did it, and I'm so excited. Um, I also have like seeds from them as well that we have growing over uh, on the other side of the grow room here. Rock Run Ashley is just this really stunning dusty rose ball dahlia, kind of formal decorative ball dahlia. It's very, very difficult to find here. So having Rock Run Ashley as a part of my collection, oh my goodness, I will be babying this girl um, and taking cuttings from her and Sarista, oh, because oh my goodness, if you know, you know, right? Like, if you know, you know. We also have Salmon Runner coming in. So Salmon Runner is another one that I have noticed through the wholesaler sells very well, is very popular amongst florists because it's this beautiful coral pink. It's very diverse throughout midsummer and then kind of going into the fall as well as it kind of starts to darken. I have two tubers of those coming in from Oak Ridge Dahlias. We also have Shiloh Noel. Um, again, as I'm starting to add dahlias that I think are going to be good for wedding work for other florists, for my wholesaler, uh, Shiloh Noel was one that I knew I needed to add to my list. Uh, it's one I get requests for. I've never grown it because I had Cafe Ole. I was like, why bother? But why not? When you have the dahlias, you might as well have all the dahlias. We are also replacing Snow Ho Doris. Uh, so I have one new tuber of hers coming in from Beneficial Meadows. I am adding two more tubers of Sweet Natalie from Oak Ridge. I currently have, currently have 23 tubers of hers. But my goal of, is to actually have almost two full rows of Sweet Natalie this year. Um, and so propagating those in order to get my count up to what I need for two full rows of tubers of Sweet Natalie. Uh, she's one of the most popular dahlias that we grow. I can never have enough of her and I know that I can sell her to my wholesaler, which I think is great. We are bringing Valley Porcupine back in. I grew her my first year growing dahlias um, and those tubers didn't survive the winter so it's been a couple years. I finally managed to find two more of those dahlias from More Blooms. And then lastly, I think, yeah, lastly here um, I am bringing in Westeron Pearl which is a gorgeous pink dahlia and I have two of those tubers coming in from Oak Ridge. So you'll notice there's definitely a theme <laughs> which is that I have a lot of blush and white and fuchsia and pink and peach dahlias. And the reason for that is because they sell the best as a florist. They're the most diverse to use in bouquets. 
they're also the ones we use the most for wedding work. Um, so being very intentional about that. As as we continue to grow our, you know, Dahlia offerings and our sales each year, I, I'm going to eventually, I think, diversify and bring in more varieties that I think are interesting for home gardeners. Um, I'm just not at the point yet where, one, I don't have the storage space for it. Dahlia, storing dahlias over the winter takes a lot of time and effort and dividing all those dahlias takes a lot of time and effort. And I don't want to be stuck with a lot of varieties that I know I'm not going to use, but at the same time, I want to make sure that we're growing varieties that you love and that you want to be able to use. And because we have a lot of you that are home gardeners that follow our channel, being able to grow those and offer those to you guys as our customers as well, I think is really important in the long term. So I am starting to pay attention to some of those. I've had questions and requests from some of you. And so I am making notes. Don't worry, I'm making notes. But this is what we've got coming in this year. So I'm really excited about that. So now that we've talked about what we're bringing in, let's talk about our Dahlia tuber storage. So for us personally, we store in vermiculite and vermiculite only. I don't store in peat. I've never, last year we did a peat moss and vermiculite mix. We found that the ones that were stored in peat mixes had um, a slimmer chance of survival than the ones that were just in vermiculite because we have very moist winters here. So what we do is we store in bins like this, making sure that when we're putting the dahlias in, they're not touching. And typically, we come in about once every six weeks and we go through and we check our dahlias. We throw out any of them that, that are molding, that are mushy, that just really aren't alive anymore. And I'll show you an example of that. So this bin here, uh, these ones are Bella S. <laughs> Apparently I had 36 tubers of these at one point. I probably don't have that anymore. <clears throat> and I've been starting to like go through these. So I, I opened this up a couple days ago, but I have a little collection here. So I have a pile. Here's my, here's my pile of dead tubers. And here, here's my flat lay of live tubers. <laughs> so a few things to look for when you're kind of going through your Dahlia tubers and figuring out whether or not they're actually good going into the following year. The first thing you wanna look for is to find, figure out whether or not your Dahlia tubers are firm, right? So if you press on this tuber, you can see I'm pressing on it. It's nice and firm. It doesn't have any give and it looks good. The other thing you wanna look for is a visible eye. This one here, its eye that is visible is right there, right? So at this time of year, they usually just look like little, little bumps, um, but pretty soon, you'll start to see a little bit of growth from that tuber. Um, at this point, because we are starting to warm, at this point in the year, because we are starting to warm some of our Dahlia tubers up for propagation, um, when I pull them out, some of them have already gone a little wild. And what I do is I just, if they're going back in storage, I just snip this off. Um, <clears throat> once you take that cutting off of that dahlia, what it is going to do is actually produce a lot of extra little cuttings. I'll show you. So this dahlia here that I have started, this one here is Aurora's Kiss. Um, but like if you look at it, right, and here you can see all of the growth. That's not crown gall. That is simply just I've taken a cutting off of this dahlia already. And every time you pull a cutting off, it tells the original tuber to push up like another three to four shoots. So I'm gonna wait for these to grow. I'm gonna take all of those as cuttings and start again. But this is not leafy gall, right? This is just dahlias doing what dahlias do. Leafy gall looks like cauliflower on the plants, right? It's really white and marbly and like gross and sometimes it oozes <laughs> and the leaves are all curled the wrong way and it's just gross, right? Often comes in on imported dahlias, which is why we don't bring in imported dahlias. So this is perfectly okay. Uh, this is perfectly okay. This one, this one's not. <laughs> so even though, even though I can see on this one, and I, I saved this one so I could show you, but even though I can see on this one that it has an eye, right it's there, right, the eye is up here. Uh, this one has a lot of icky mold on it. I tried washing it off, but if you, like, I'm pushing, the tuber's mushy, right? Like, I'm pushing on the tuber, 
and it it has it's icky so this one I'm getting rid of um, there's also a collection of them here where just like this one lost its eye fully like the sprout popped off and it took the whole eye with it so this guy's not viable and it's gonna go and the reason I like to store in ver vermiculite you know as opposed to other things is because vermiculite when it gets wet it clumps like cat litter and so it's a really good indication for you when you're going through your dahlias to figure out where the problem dahlia is because the vermiculite looks off so like it sticks to the icky tuber this is another one I don't know if you can see I'm pushing on it I'm not keeping even though it has an eye there this one's going to the burn pile um, because it's mushy it's rotting on the inside and I'm not keeping dahlias that are gonna potentially ruin the rest of my stock that said this little guy <laughs> which is the tiniest dahlia tuber right known to mankind and is a Bella S which if you know Bella S Bella S is like a massive huge it's dinner plate dahlia this will still produce a plant. Its eye is already waking up. You can see the eye there. So whether you have a tuber that's this size, you know, or a tuber that's this size, both of these are still going to produce dahlias for you in the spring. So the size of the tuber doesn't matter. What matters is that it has all three parts of the anatomy of a tuber and uh, regenerative farming, which uh, she posted a video about this the other day. If you haven't watched that yet and you're interested about the anatomy of a dahlia, I've linked that video below as well. I recommend you go and watch that because she breaks down the um, the tuber, the, the neck, and the eye part of the dahlia, so the crown. Those are the three parts of the dahlia anatomy that you need in order to make sure that you have a, like, a viable tuber for the following season. So that's storage. <laughs> right now we are in the process of pulling all of our dahlias out, and so if I turn you over here, these are all of the dahlias. It's just so you can get the full effect. These are all of the dahlias that we've gone through. Um, so we're about a third of the way through. Once we've finished going through these, that's it. We're pro not going to look at them again before we start shipping them out, before we plant them. Because at this point in the season, anything that's molded, anything that's not good, it has already been pulled out and these are all gonna be fine. Um, the other thing we're starting to do is pull out the ones that are being like chosen for shipping. So like if you are somebody that ordered a blizzard dahlia, um, the tubers that I have set aside for you are here. We always choose the very best of every one of our tubers for our customers. So like this one is a blizzard dahlia. This one already has an eye, an active eye. So in a couple weeks we'll be shipping these out. That's really exciting. So lastly today we're going to talk about taking dahlia cuttings. So I'm going to talk about what first of all when I take cuttings. Um, second of all that everybody overthinks the process and it's not actually that hard. Third of all when you're going to up pot your cutting into fresh bigger pot right? Up potted. This is, a, this is a whole process in and of itself, but if you are looking to expand your dahlia tubers, it's a great way to do it. So this tuber here, this one is called Rosendale Peach. Uh, this is one we grew last year, and I only had a few of the tubers survive, so I knew that I needed to propagate this one, take cuttings from it in order to increase my stock going forward. So when I'm looking to take propagates, this would be the stage right here that I would take that at. So it, it's not fully got its first um, first leaves pumped out yet. Um, and the reason I do it at this point is because I can actually pull off those bottom leaves on it uh, in order to give it a better chance for rooting. So I'll show you what I mean in a second here. I don't know where my camera stand went, so we're gonna, we're gonna use snips <laughs> to, to keep you level. Okay. Right? So here it is. So now I take this cutting, 
do it so I'm not backlit. Here we go. So I take this cutting here. You can see it's still attached to the eye. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the tuber. Okay. Some people use scalpels. If you want to use a scalpel for this, it's fine. What I do is I just use my fingernail. Careful not, like, this one I don't have to be as careful with because it has more eyes on it. Um, but you want to just be gentle when you're pulling it off. And take it off like that. So when you're left on the tuber, you should still see where the eye was, right? So that green is still kind of connected there. And then your cutting is going to look like, it's so little, cutting is going to look like this. Now the most impar important part about this is the bottom. Okay? So here you need to be able to see on the bottom these two leaves. So what we're actually going to do is rip those off. Okay? We're going to rip these two bottom pieces off. And the reason we do that is because that is where the tuber's roots are going to start to the new tuber's roots or the new cutting's roots are going to start to develop. Right? It's right right in there. We use this little like hexagon thing um, that can keep them all separate. What you're going to do is you're going to take this end, you're going to stick it in the dirt, okay, like that, and then you're actually just going to let it continue growing in there. So all of these here I pulled off at that stage. The reason I do it at that stage is I used to do it when they looked like this on the plant. When they looked like this on the plant. The reason I don't do that anymore uh, is because I found it was much more common for them to experience stem rot. I don't use any rooting hormone. I never have. And I've never had any issues uh, with this. So now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to label that one that I just put in so that I don't forget. It's Rosendale Peach. <clears throat> I use just one of these, a marker, I write down what it is, and then in it goes. All done. Now the reason I like to do it this way is because when I pull this tray out, I can very clearly see underneath what the roots look like. And then I know when it's time to pot up the dahlias. So I have at least two of them in there that are ready to pot up. So I'm going to go get that ready and then I'll meet you back in a second. So for these, I just use very simple, like two inch square pots. We get these from Dollarama because <laughs> they're super cheap and they work. We wash them, we bleach them every year and we reuse them the following year. So let's pot these babies up. So when I'm working, I always leave myself a space here. I want to make sure that I have room to set my pot <laughs> so that when I am actually potting things up, it has a place to go. So this one here, this is the Aurora's Kiss. Really easy way to tell whether or not it's ready to go is to just very carefully give it a little tug. If it gives you pushback, if it gives you a lot of pushback like that, it's probably ready to go. So these, I know there's... A lot of discussion around whether or not you should use like wooden sticks. I use them and it's because they double as spoons. So what I do is I take this, I use it as like similar to the, similarly to using a knife. So when you take it and you give it a little tug and it gives you some pushback, essentially what I do is I use this as kind of a spoon. So I go in, I dig out underneath, make my, my hole with my fingers in the fresh soil, come in very carefully and essentially just dig that center out like this and in it goes. 
So that one is now ready to go. It's going to go in with the rest of its friends. And then we're going to do it again because already Adele also had, I think it was already Adele. Nope, it was Rubber Ducky. So this one here also had a good root system going. Very gently. Get underneath the dahlia. Pull it up. Right? You can see the roots there. Make your hole. In it goes. Push it in. Label. So hopefully today's video was helpful for you. If you have any questions about how we propagate our dahlias, uh, about tuber storage or about any of the new varieties we have coming to the farm this year, I encourage you to leave a comment below. If you enjoyed the video and you want to continue to follow along on our flower journey, please like the video, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a great day. Bye everyone.